Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da. Habita fillah, continue on in our series about uh, purification and salat from Imam Fulzan's book, Hafidhullahu Ta'ala, uh, which deals with uh, Malachis Fiqiyya, the summary of fiqh. Uh, so we reached the way of performing wudu, basically how to make wudu. We talked about wudu or ablution, its conditions. Uh, and so now the imam mentions nine steps, if you will, of making proper wudu and meeting the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is very important for us to uh, understand this. And every Muslim should understand this because every Muslim has to pray. So every Muslim has to have proper tahara, purification. So he mentioned the first thing. He said the first thing is intention, aniya. Okay? To intend performing ablution for the acts of worship for which ablution is required, such as prayer and the like. So, of course, you need to have your intention that you're making uh, this act of ibadah, that purification, because it is a means to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have to have your intention. And this goes back to the hadith that we mentioned many times in the Ma'mal bin Niyad. The Prophet Sallallahu said, in the Ma'mal bin Niyad, wa in the Malikul Limriyan Manawa. Verily, actions are tied to the intentions and everyone shall get that for which he intended. So this lets us know that our intention is required for wudu. So your intention is required for prayer. Your intention is required for anything, uh, any acts of ibadah. So the first thing is make an intention before you make your wudu. The second thing is the tasmiya, saying bismillah. Okay, saying the bismillah. So this is me, you're going to, although we, we mentioned, I think, some of the ikhtilaf regarding the, the, tasmi, the tasmiya, uh, we're giving you the safest position uh, with regards to making your wudu. So saying bismillah before you make your wudu, before you wash your hands and... Uh, and the other acts of wudu. <coughs> uh, then the third step is to wash the hands uh, three times. Okay? As we mentioned. We also mentioned that you can wash them how many times? Just one. Okay? But the sunnah, if you want to, we're talking about the safest way and the way to yasib a sunnah. To get the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, Meaning you're going to get extra ajr. Make this your habit to follow the sunnah to do it three times. Uh, then... The fourth step is to rinse the mouth three times and then to rinse the nose three times, okay? So by sniffing water and then blowing it out through the left hand, okay? And there's different ways, yeah. So you can use the water. You can take the water in your mouth, you know, and this is called mud, mud, to mud, mud, uh, and then to take it in your nose is called istin shak. So you can take it in your nose. You can do it with one, with one handful of water and do both. Okay? Or you can do it separately. Clean the mouth separately and clean the nose separately. And blow it out with the left. So that is the fourth step. The fifth is to wash the face three times. Okay? Again, that's sunnah. Sunnah to do it three times. But you must wash the face at least once. Uh, and that's from the upper part of the forehead. Okay, the beginning of the normal hairline to the lower part of the uh, of the jaws length lengthwise. Okay, uh, and from one ear to the other widthwise. Okay, without washing the ears uh, as they are treated as a part of the head, not the face as is previously mentioned. Okay. <clears throat> The beard as well, for the men, the beard as well must be washed if the hair of the beard is not thick. One has to wash it uh, internally and externally, okay? Uh, but if it is thick, it has to be washed from the outside. And it is desirable to insert the wet fingers, washing it internally as mentioned above as well, okay? Uh, the sixth the sixth um, step for the wudu is to wash the hands up to the elbows three times. 
okay? Washing it to the elbows three times. Each hand is to be washed from the upper parts of the fingers and nails to the beginning of the upper arm. Moreover, one has to remove whatever sticks to the hands or fingernails, such as dough, mud, or thick paint, as we talked about before, before washing the hands, so as to allow the water to reach those parts uh, of your skin. <clears throat> the seventh is to wipe over the whole head one time. Wipe over the whole head once, <clears throat> and this is including the ears. With wet hands provided, the water used for wiping over them is fresh, unlike the remaining from washing the hands. So getting the fresh water and then wiping, going to the nape of the neck, coming back, and then the ears. Okay, sticking the, the fingers in the ears, cleaning out the ears and wiping over the ears like this. So... To wipe over the head once, including the ears with wet hands, provided the water used for wiping over them is fresh water, uh, unlike the remaining water from washing the hands. The proper way of wiping over the head is to is by putting one's wet hands on the upper part of the forehead and let them pass backward until they reach uh, one's nape of the neck, then return them forward to the starting point. After that, one is to insert one's two wet forefingers in the holes of the ears while wiping over the outer parts uh, with one's thumbs. Okay? Yeah. Good. And then the eighth, Ahabatifillah, is to wash the feet three times, including the ankles. Very important to get those ankles. Okay? As for one whose hand or foot is amputated, uh, such one is to wash what is left of the arm or the feet. To clarify, if the arm is amputated from the joint of the elbow, one is to wash the, fore, the front part of the upper arm, and if the foot is amputated from the ankles, one is to wash the tip of the amputated leg. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so fear Fear Allah as much as you are able. Similarly, the Prophet wasallam said, if I command you to do something, then do it as much as you can. So this lets us know that al-qudra, al uh, the ability is a condition for your ibadah, for all acts of worship. And this is why, to go on a side note, that we have groups like the Takfiri extremists who say to you know say that making jihad in any and all circumstances and under other all situations and they always say why are you making qudra a why are you making ability uh, a condition instead we can just do anything we want no all acts of worship in the religion of Islam you need to have the qudra qudra ability is a shart it's a condition for being able to do those acts of ibadah if you don't have the ability you can't do it okay it's simple as that. And took Allah as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and as we heard from this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Accordingly, if a person washes what is left of an amputated limb, it will be sufficient as one the, uh, thus does as much as they're able to do. Okay? Uh, the ninth thing is after finishing the ablution or the wudu, in accordance with the above stated uh, form that we mentioned, one may raise one's uh, sight towards the heaven and invoke Allah with some of the invocations of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So meaning after you made wudu, you can raise, look up to the heavens in this regard, such as saying, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, you know, I testify that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah with no partner. And I testify that Muhammad is the servant and messenger. O oh Allah, make me of those who are constantly repentant and make me of those who purify themselves. And saying, uh, uh, Okay. O oh Allah, make me from those who, uh, who are repentant and those who purify themselves. You know, the purified ones. Or you can say, 
another supplication. Exalted are you, O Allah, and all praise be to you. I testify that there is no deity but you. I ask you, uh, no deity of worship, worthy of worship but you. I ask you for forgiveness and turn to you in repentance. So that's another supplication the Prophet Wasallam said. <clears throat> the reason behind mentioning this dhikr, these adhkar, an invocation following evolution, is to combine both the physical and spiritual tahara. So the reason we make this dhikr, of course, is following the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, and it's both types of purity. It is the dhikr, uh, hisiyah wa dhikr ma'nawiyah, or it is the dhikr which is... Uh, physic, uh, I'm sorry, it is the tahara, it's the purification, which is a spiritual purification by making the supplication, you know, because it's an act of worship and you're doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're doing it to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is also a physical purification because you're cleaning those limbs and uh, cleansing yourself. So you're cleansing yourself both physically and spiritually. Uh, so this is very important and we'll continue after the uh, after the Adhan so again this the reason for doing the dhikr is for meeting two types of purification what are they first is a purification spiritual purification mumtaz and and physical purification mumtaz jiddin uh, and so, and this is done by, uh, so the means of physical purity, whereas dhikr and invocate in the invocation or the supplication is, has to do with, uh, affirming tawheed, the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And this, these are the signs of spiritual, uh, purity and coming to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with submissiveness. And also another last point is also it is permissible to dry yourself with a towel or otherwise uh, after you make wudu. Now some ulama they they say that it's not permissible even that you should not dry yourself uh, and because this is the the forgiveness of sin, so they even go to the extent of saying that it's not even that it's not permissible that you should not not just should not but not permissible. So. Uh, the scholars, they differ with regards to that, but as Imam Fulzan says, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, that it's permissible to dry yourself, <clears throat> dry one's organs with a towel or paper towels or what have you when you make the wudu. So every Muslim should know how to, of course, make wudu and do it properly. And uh, this is illustrated when the Prophet wasallam he saw a man who had left a spot on his foot. And we're going to cover this really quickly. As small as a fingernail unwashed after ablution, okay? Uh, and the Prophet Sallallahu said, uh, go back and perform your wudu well, your ablution properly. Moreover, some of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, companions, radiyallahu ta'ala majma'een, reported that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw a man offering prayer where there was uh, on the back of his foot a small part equal to the space of a dirham, uh, which was not washed, so a small a coin size spot that was dry water didn't reach it the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam commanded him to re uh, to make wudu or his ablution over uh, in addition the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said wailu lil aqab min an-nar woe to the heels from the hellfire so it shows us that you know uh, the importance of making wudu properly and that is cuz it's a shart it's a condition for your prayer you know, the wudu is a condition for your prayer. Taib. <coughs> uh, also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, the prayer of any one of you is not complete until he performs ablution perfectly as Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala uh, has ordered him. He should wash his face and hands up to the elbows, wipe over his head, and wash his feet to the ankles. However, Muslims should know that the perfection of ablution is not to use a lot of water. So that doesn't mean you need to waste water. And this is a big, maybe a fallacy, or it's just unfortunately a bad habit that many of us have. We waste a lot of water. 
okay, regardless of where they are in many places in the world where Muslims are making tahara all over the world, we tend to be very wasteful with water. Unless you are blessed in another way where you're restricted in the water and you actually use just a container. You are limited in your water. But most of the time, we're very wasteful. When we have our sinks, we let our sinks run. We talk. We use a lot. It's on full blast instead of, you know, very simple or you putting it in a jug or just making the water trickle and using what is sufficient. So it's very important uh, to not be wasteful. To be wasteful during evolution, this is incorrect. And being wasteful in general uh, is uh, is muharram, is impermissible when you're wasteful. Wasteful with wealth, wasteful with the resources, wasteful with the barakah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you or the ni'am, the ni'ma, the ni'am, the favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you. You should not be wasteful with those things. So the uh, perfection of wudu with little water is exactly what is mashru'ah what is legislated. And this is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. I stated in the two sahihs and uh, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meaning Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to perform ablution with one mud, uh, to take a bath with one sa'a up to five amdad or muds. Okay. Uh, so it was just a small amount of water. Like uh, I think a mud, I believe is like a two hands, uh, or maybe it's, uh, anyway, it's a, a small measured amount of, of water. The Prophet Sallallahu also forbade wastefulness of water. He once, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, passed by Sa'ad while the latter was performing ablution and said to him, Why are you wasting all this water? Sa'ad said, Is there wastefulness even in performing ablution? You know, even in performing wudu? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, Yes, even if you were performing it from a river of running water. So don't be wasteful. Uh, and this hadith was related by uh, Imam Ahmed and also Ibn, in, Ibn, uh, Ibn, uh, Ibn Majah and supported by other narrations of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also stated that there would be some people of the Muslim nation who would exceed the limits in purification. So this is a warning who would purify themselves excessively, meaning wastefully and having unsubstantiated doubt. Uh, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, there is a demon of ablution called al-walhan. So be on your guard against the, insu insuition, the, the insinuation in ablution. Uh, so excessiveness in pouring water, which is considered wasteful, leads to other illegal, detestable consequences. So it's very important to not be wasteful with the water and it could lead you to be uh, incomplete in your purification or excessiveness uh, being excessive. Uh, and also by using being excessive, it can also make you even doubtful about your purification, about did you wash your limbs properly and so on and so forth. So those are just some of the benefits that the imam was talking about. Uh, in this chapter, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wassalamu alaikum. Ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wasallam.